Hey folks, this is Justin at Metcalf Mills. Today I'm working on a 1959 Meadows Mill. It's an 8 inch size and what that means, the stones are 8 inches in diameter. So it's a small little mill. To my knowledge, it's the smallest mill that Meadows Mills ever built. Now what we're going to be doing is just checking it out and dressing the stones to make sure they're ready to grind good. And I've had this little mill here on the porch at the house for a while, and I've used it a little bit. But a fellow I know was needing a small mill for something his family's doing, so that's where it's going. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. But let's get started working on this thing. And the first thing we're going to do to take this apart is we're going to take out these Allen screws so that we can take this eccentric off the shaft, and we can pull this pulley off the shaft, and then we'll take out four bolts on the case and split the case in half and that will expose the face of the stones so that we can go on to the dressing process. Case is splitting open right here. It cracks forming there where it's separating. Now, traditionally, millstones lay flat, they lay one flat on top of the other. Bed stones on the bottom, runner stones on the top. But about 1900 or 1902, right around in there, W.C. Meadows invented these mills with the stones stand vertical side by side. You don't have to take the hopper and the shoe assembly off, but I'm going to just to make things easier. Just take a few minutes to take it off and it'll make life a lot easier. We're addressing these stones, taking everything apart and putting it back together. Make it a lot easier. There you can see the face of the stones. The face of the stones, probably can't, you might be able to see it in the video, but if you can tell how s smooth and slick that is, especially right there, it's really smooth and slick. That's what I call tombstoned. When a millstone gets tombstoned, it gets real slick and polished. Now that's from just being used and never being dressed. And you can see the runner stone here. It's about the same way. It's really, really slick. So what I'm going to do, the grooves look good. You want the grooves to be about 3 sixteenths or a quarter here in the eye of the millstone to taper out to nothing on the outside, but these are dressed... Almost, they're dressed out a little deep on the outside edge. But what I'll do is I'll come in here with a pick or bush hammer and I'll rough up. These are called the lands. The flat areas are called the lands. These are called the furrows. The furrows and the lands. So the furrows in the center where the grain comes in, you can see this little auger spring right here when that grain falls down this carries it up into the millstones as this shaft is turning it grabs the grain when it falls down and carries it up into the millstones and right here at the eye of the millstone that's where the grinding process starts that's where it starts crushing that grain and then as the grain gets crushed it starts moving out through the furrows and the lands start grinding it even finer. So these furrows act like a pair of scissors. You know how scissors come together and scissors cross each other. They cross, the blades cross at the shear point. That's exactly what happens in millstones. They shear the grain. That's why the quality is so much better than any kind of 
steel burr or anything, after it's sheared into a small enough size, the lands are really rough, like really coarse sandpaper. They grind the grain on down to the fine consistency that you've got the mill set at. And clean all the dust off. What we're gonna do now is pour us a shot, a shot of food coloring. Red food coloring is what we use to dress our millstones. In the olden days, they would use red iron oxide mixed with water or kerosene oil and paint it on. And what that does is that shows you, well, getting ahead of myself a little bit here. You paint all the furrows and the lands with red food coloring. And then what we'll do is we will let that dry, put this meal back together and run it without grain. And we will adjust it so that those stones barely touch together. We'll just bump them a little bit, run it maybe five minutes or so, and then we take it back apart. All right, we'll let our food color and dry. And we're gonna put it back together. see where the stones have touched where they rub together that's where the food coloring is gone and that is called a armenical you won't find that word anywhere in Webster's book or anywhere else I learned it from an old timer that learned it from another old timer armenical is you can see what was there you can see where these stones touch, but they're not touching now. That's an armenical. It's a track of what has happened. So now I know where to dress on these stones. I know exactly where to take these stones down to make them true to each other. In other words, this has shown me the high spots. Even though these stones were smooth and slick and tombstoned as I call it they're not that bad they just need dressing just roughing up so now get our little stone down here and get ready to dress it mostly I use a bush hammer or a mill pick this is a bush hammer it's a 25 point carbide tipped hammer and it works really good on millstones. I can see where the stones have touched is really slick and no, no food color in there whatsoever. Those are the spots that I want to hit during this process.
same process on the runner stone. We just get into a little different position. The thing about dressing millstones, you want to try to tap every time with the exact same amount of pressure. Now unless you've got the big stones where you can lay them down both flat on the ground or whatever on the floor, then you can pick your hammer up and drop that hammer so that the hammer strikes every time with the same pressure. You can just pick your mill pick or your bush hammer up the same height and drop it every time. And that makes sure that you hit with the same amount of pressure each and every time. The accuracy of stone dressing in the olden days when they were dressing for some of this fine flour was just amazing how accurate they could get within the third they put 32 strikes in an inch with these hammers and I have heard of some stone dressers being able to put more than that so it's amazing how accurate the dress can be about in olden days instead of food color and they used red iron oxide the application was different on that because those stones were maybe four or five foot in diameter they were huge so they had what they call a proof staff and a paint staff the proof staff I'll show you in a later video it was made out of iron and it was a perfectly true flat surface and the paint staff was made out of wood and it was a perfectly true flat surface. So the proof staff was used to proof the paint staff to make sure that wooden surface was perfectly flat. And they did that by painting the proof staff, putting the wooden paint staff onto the proof staff. Same concept, pull the wood off of the proof staff and they can see if there were any high spots that needed to be taken down on the paint staff. Then, if the paint staff was true, they would paint it with red iron oxide and they would lay the paint staff down, give you an example. So if this is the paint staff, a perfectly true surface, which this is not, but just to tell you how it works, they would paint the red iron oxide on the paint staff, lay the paint staff down on the stones and turn it around. And what that did was it transferred the paint on the perfectly smooth surface onto the high spots on the millstone. So when they turned it, those high spots got marked with paint. So here we're, we're, we're rubbing the high spots together to take the paint off. It's the opposite way of doing the same thing. Gonna let them dry. We'll come back, run it again, do the same thing over. where we're touching right here just a little bit just a few spots needs taken down all right folks you can see where it's touching even with what i dressed last time that's what i almost what i call a full contact so that means the face of the millstones are almost together i don't worry too much about dead center here because that's where the grain starts the process of being milled or ground right in here i like to be a little deeper in the eye so we'll touch this up once again like we did last time and this thing should be ready to grind some grain. So now that we've run this again, we've got to a more final stage of what it looks like. 
I'm going to come in and just very lightly dress these lands to where they're rough so that they will grind. Just very lightly because the smaller the stone, the harder it is to keep everything true because you got less surface area to work with. Seems like it'd be the opposite, but it's really not. can see what we've done on this dress. Just lightly hit the high spots. Now I'm going to just clean out around the eye. Sometimes the stone wires down and it starts closing this gap and that's where the millstone receives the grain. When the grain comes through here with the little auger pushing it, this is where the millstone receives the grain, right around this eye. So I just want to deepen that all the way around to help it accept that grain better. See what we've done here. You can see the dress on the lands. And you can see how <clears throat> we've cleaned out the eye to deepen it just a little bit. The funny thing about it is if a millstone gets stone in its eye, it can't see how to grind. So you gotta keep its eye cleaned out. Up here, you can see that dress. Just the high spots. It's the only place we touch. So let's put this back together and see how she grinds. I wanna show you a grease cup. <clears throat> now this is a grease cup. This screws off and it's just a little cup. So you put the grease inside of this cup. You screw it off, put grease inside of there, screw it back down on here. And ever so many hours of running this mill, you just walk over and you just turn the grease cup a little bit. And that's how it, it's it's got a, a hole inside here that goes up into the grease cup uh, where the grease cup is. And when you turn this, see the grease come out in there? That's how you grease this, keep these bearings greased. It's that simple. Just turn this, just maybe an eighth of a turn. That's how it works. so you can kind of understand. This is the hopper. It's where you put your grain in. Down here, you have an adjustment screw. This, when you turn this nut, it presses down on this arm that goes over to this feed cup right here. So when you turn this, it raises the feed cup off of the shoe so that the grain can come out. Okay. This shoe is continually shaking. And that's by way of this arm that comes over and it hinges here and it goes over and down to this eccentric. Now this is an off set machined collar that goes on the round shaft that's turning and the bolt is offset on the end so that when this turns Eccentric gives it a shake. See how that works? Alright. 
So we'll turn this mill on, tighten the screw, which will raise the cup, and it'll start feeding corn in. The corn comes down through the shoe, falls down into here, down into that little spraying auger on the shaft that I showed you that you could see earlier when I had this mill apart. The shaft turning pulls the grain into the eye of the millstones. Okay, this is your adjustment. You break this loose. That allows you to turn this smaller knob. And what that does, it moves the shaft in and out with the runner stone to get those millstones closer together or farther apart. That's how you adjust if you want to grind like fine flour or you want to grind something coarse like cornmeal or even crack corn for chicken feed. That's how you do it. All right, down here, this has got the drawer system on it. So you pull this drawer out. Your product comes out of the millstones right here. So that is looking up into the millstones. And the, and the product just falls down into this box and the drawer is actually a scoop so when you slide the drawer in it scoops up and while you're grinding you can pull it out take this out and dump your product out somewhere and you put your drawer back in it scoops up what has came down while you had the drawer out so let's fire this thing up and see how she grinds now before i address the stones it took quite a while to grind just a little bit of corn so there's about a, a quarter hopper, maybe a third of a hopper full of corn. Turn this baby on and see how long it takes to mill this corn. up under here you can see the stones up there so as the products ground it just falls out right into this little drawer cabinet here so you pull this out dump your product out when it gets enough slide it back in and it scoops up as it slides back in so folks there it is you saw how just pecking on a rock with a hammer can make it grind grain into a fine quality product. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed the, the process of cleaning up and dressing this meal, dressing the stones. Uh, this particular meal is going to Gallant, Alabama to the Greasy Cove General Store. If you're in Alabama, you can swing on by over there and check them out. This meal is gonna be grinding corn in there, hopefully soon, so. This is Justin at Metcalf Mills. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Grist Mills.